Well, let's start with attacking. Let's grab this. Oh, it's a swift spear. How do you like that? I love nabbing things off the top of the library, especially when it's something they could have used. So I've really been wanting to build a deck around Atrata. Atrata is a very interesting creature. It's a creature that, that is only a 1-4 with death touch for 3 mana. And on its own, seems kind of meh. Uh, and a 1-4 with death touch really is not going to incentivize your opponent to block it. And that's where the beauty of this card comes. Whenever... Etrata or another assassin you control deals damage to an opponent, you get to cloak the top card off of your opponent's library and put it into play on your side. And what cloaking does is basically you take that top card, put it onto your side of the table as a uh, colorless 2-2 disguised creature with ward. And at any time, you can pay two colorless, a blue and a black, to flip that card over and if it's a creature, well, boom, you got a creature. No big deal. But if it's a non-creature spell, then you can cast that spell for um, just the mana that you just paid. The two colors, a blue and a black. So if it's one of your opponent's planeswalkers, you get to play that planeswalker. If it's a kill spell, you get to play that kill spell. Damage, draw, anything that your opponent will be playing, you then get to just activate and use for just that small activation cost. It's a really cool effect. So what I'm going to do with Etrata is I'm going to put her into a Demir mid-range shell and see if we can't get any kind of like cool benefits off of her. So let's go take a look at the deck. Okay, so here we are. This is my Etrata deck. At first glance, you'll notice that it looks like a pretty standard um Dimir mid-range build. It's got all the usual suspects. You got the Spyglass Siren, into Deep Cavern Bat, into Gix, into Massacre Girl, into Vein Ripper, and Virtue of Persistence at the top end. So, a few differences in this deck versus the standard um, Dimir mid-range shell. Um, you'll notice a distinct lack of um, Sheldred. Sheldred is missing from this list because I wanted to include Masker Girl and Vein Ripper because of the fact that they work with Etrata. Because Etrata cares about assassins. If you look at that last line of text there that says, whenever an assassin you control deals combat damage to an opponent, cloak the top card of that player's library. So Etrata is an assassin. Massacre Girl is an assassin, and also Vein Ripper is an assassin. So these three cards are going to be like our top end cards that we want to play to get Etrata to start cloaking cards. So aside from that, we are running Spyglass Siren and Greedy Freebooter as one drops. Freebooter is fantastic in a build like this because it gives you a good like speed bump kind of blocker in the early game that also dies scries and gives you a treasure token and that treasure token can be used to ramp up into vein ripper or virtue of persistence so that's why greedy freebooters in here spyglass siren into subterranean schooner is a very common through line for this deck also deep cavern bat um, into gix is another common through line so you see a lot of the usual suspects for this deck um, aside from that, um, you can take a look at the mana base. You got four islands, one Atawara, seven swamps, a Takanuma, four dark slick shores, two restless reefs, two shipwreck marsh, and four underground river. So you should never have problems playing the cards you want at the time when you need to play them, because each of these cards have only one or two in the casting cost, except for Vein Ripper. Vein Ripper is a little difficult to cast. It requires three black and three colorless to cast. But by the, by the time you get to turn six, you should have at least three mana, three black mana on the table. But yeah, there it is. That's the deck. Pretty, uh, pretty straightforward stuff. Removal, creatures, um, cloaking. Let's go take it out there and see how it plays. Okay, so we got a Dark Slick Shores, a Swamp, and a Takanuma, and a pretty solid curve. Spyglass Siren into Schooner, into Etrata, with a removal spell. That's pretty solid. Alright, we'll start first playing the Dark Slick Shores into Spyglass Siren. Siren makes a map token. 
All right, cool. So let's go ahead and play the swamp so we can play the schooner. And we will attack for one. All right, so they will possibly have a um, removal spell handy for us. So let's activate the schooner. And we'll see if we can draw a removal spell out of them. <clears throat> yeah, that Gix can stay there. Like they're mulling their hand over. Okay, they're gonna kill that instead. That's fine. So that frees me up to cast a Trata. Alright. Third land is a shipwreck marsh. Wow, okay. Alright, they kill a Trata. So this is definitely a control deck. Let's crew up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll draw that card. Pretty good synergy there. Now the schooner has a permanent plus one counter on it. Oh, okay. I'm into this. All right, let's go here and here. Remove that creature. Hmm. Yeah. And then we just attack for four. Draw a card. Nice. What do you got in there? Kaido, Sunfall, Rafine, Fairy. Uh, let's take your Rafine. <clears throat> so now he could play the Kaido this turn, or he could use the adventure side of Virtue of Loyalty to make a Knight token. So he's got options. He just doesn't have enough mana to cast everything. And the fact that he's down to 7 health doesn't help him. Yep. Alright, so let's see here. So I'm going to activate the schooner. Tapping the Deep Cavern Bat. Bat gets bigger. Oh, well, draw a swamp. Very nice. I do like drawing cards. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah. But it sucks getting landlocked. Happens to the best of us. Okay, so what do we have here? We have two virtues, two lands, two schooners, and an Etrata. Darn near a full house. We'll keep it. Alright, island first. Hit him with the hello. We can be cordial. Uh, they're playing red. Take back my desire to be cordial. Alright, I'll uh, we'll play a swamp. And go Virtue. Eliminate that. Alright. Mountain. Ooh, no creature to follow up with. That's not good. Alright, let's play Trata. I like a Trata having four toughness, so it can't be lightning bolted. But if an opponent has two shocks, well, then that's a different story.
It looked like they were thinking about it for a moment there. Mechanized warfare. Okay, I'm into it. All right, let's play. Well, let's start with attacking. Let's grab this. Oh, it's a swift spear. How do you like that? Okay, then let's go ahead and play a subterranean schooner and a dark slick shore, and we pass the turn. I love nabbing things off the top of the library, especially when it's something they could have used. And that ward too is pretty solid. Makes it really difficult for them to remove. Lightning strike. Okay. Um, sure. Alright, four damage, it's gone. And the festivities, huh? Okay. Sure. It's gone. And a Voldaren Epicure. Alright. Let's start with this right here. Eliminate that. And we'll play another schooner. As soon as we get a creature, I tell ya. We're gonna be sailing the seas. Yeah, I, I see what you're thinking. No, I, I cannot crew a schooner with another schooner. That would be hilarious, though. Alright. Okay. Alright, alright, okay. Alright, we're taking five. It's gonna hurt. Alright. So, first things first. Eliminate that. Then, play Gix. Crew up using Gix. And here's where it gets weird. We're going to crew up using that. And we're going to chain plus one counters. And attack for three. And that's going to explore. Ooh, cut down. Yeah, that stays right there. Okay, no, we're not actually chaining because they're not both attacking. It had, had they both attacked, then yes. Yeah, we'll pay life and get the card. I don't think they'll do 15 damage this turn. Though stranger things have happened. Mono Red does just pull wins out of its ass. Okay. Do you have another one? <laughs> yeah, yeah you do. Alright, hit me for two. Alright. Ask your girl. It land. I like that land. And we'll end the turn. So we have a cut down for that Phoenix check. Let's see what they do. I'm gonna nuke it right now before you get a chance to draw like Monstrous Rage or something. Watch it be an even worse creature. Ooh, that was a close one. Oh, hi. How you doing? Ah, uh, I can't even cast it. I want to play the Vein Ripper. 
Okay, so looks like our opponent took one mulligan. So we have two underground rivers, a spyglass siren, make disappear, a trata, deep cavern bat, and vein ripper. It's a pretty decent open. We're going to be taking a lot of damage with the underground rivers though. We play a swamp into evolved sleeper. Map token. Deep Cavern Bat. Yep. And they're going to use that to eat my decap Deep Cavern Bat. Or my counter spell. Either one is fine, honestly. Where it me, me personally, I would take the Deep Cavern Bat. Just gotta make your choice. Yep, take the bat. Alright, sweet. So, Underground River. We play Subterranean Schooner. Auto pay. Smack him. Probably should have kept that behind just to crew the schooner for a block. It is what it is. Now, if they play a follow up Deep Cavern bet, I will be. Nonplussed. Okay. All right, more bats, or er, more sleepers. Okay, there's a land. Sweet. All right. So let's go ahead and start with this. Get my bat back. Play said bat. And dig around in your hand. Candy grapple. Yeah, take the candy grapple. Alright. Crew up. Choosing the deep cavern bat to crew with. And attack. And Gix can stay there. I like Gix. Really? You concede after that? Okay, I'll take it. Alright, here we are with the post-game wrap, and here are my thoughts regarding this deck. The deck is solid. It definitely does what it seeks to do. And a lot of that can be owed to the established um, boats and bats shell that Demir Midrange has been working on for the last few months. The Spyglass Siren into Deep Cavern Bat or Schooner into Gix is a really solid open for any game. It, like that's If you ha see that kind of hand in your opening, you're going to be into a good game. Unless you're playing against like a control deck that just removes all your opening stuff. Because once your board gets wiped, it gets a little difficult to get back on board, especially if you don't have a schooner on the table. Um, aside from that, Greedy Freebooter is great at doing what you need, need it to do, which is to die and then ramp you with a treasure token. Uh, the removal is good. You got three cut down, three bitter triumph, and three virtue of persistence. Um, you'll notice that a lot of those removals don't necessarily work with Massacre Girl's ability, but that's not the kind of deck that this is. Massacre Girl is really just in here to be a creature that will feed Atratus' ability. If you happen to get Massacre Girl's ability to go off, all the better, but it is not necessary for this deck to function. Um, as far as Vein Ripper, Vein Ripper being a top end for this deck as a 6 5 flying warded creature with upside, really, really solid. Um, in most games, you might not even get to Vein Ripper, um, but I like having him in here just because he feeds the game plan with a Trata. So you could 
uh, drop the Vein Rippers in favor of something else, as most games will be over before you get to him. But I think I'm going to keep him. I like him. So um, aside from that, mana base looks solid. You got good removal, um, good draw off of um, off of Gix and off of Etrata, um, and also off of Subterranean Schooner offering um, uh, Explore, because you because drawing those lands off of Explore is still drawing cards, and that's just one fewer land that you're going to be drawing next turn. So yeah, there it is. There you go. Um, I will put a link to the. Uh, deck in the description box down below. So if you feel interested in trying this deck out for yourself, or even if you want to take the pieces and build an even better deck on your own, then feel free. So there it is. Now that you've uh, seen the deck, go play some games. <laughs>